Hey YouTube, what's happening? Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. My name is Amy and this is Amy Marie Art. In today's video, I'm going to be painting the Night Mouse. Here's the one riding on the back of Marcel. So grab a coffee, grab a drink, sit back and relax, and I hope you enjoy today's video. Okay, let's get started with our second mouse from It's All A Bit Cuckoo, and he is the Night Mouse. For those of you who saw my first video on Teddy the Mouse, which is actually in the left-hand corner here, you'll know that I had done the base coat on all of the mice first, um, and then went back and decided to do them one at a time, which is why now you can see that Teddy is completely done. <laughs> This is where I'm actually going over the top of Night Mouse's fur and concentrating just on him for the rest of the video. A little bit of background history on my character, the Night Mouse. He is one of the three mice in the land of Zudoria. So it probably comes as no surprise that out of those three mice, the Night Mouse is the brave one. He is the protector and he will do anything to help the other mice and the other Zudorian creatures. The three mice are not only friends, but they are brothers. And Night Mouse, his real name is Noel. But when Noel was young, he was so good at protecting his brothers, Teddy and Duncan, that they all called him their knight in shining armour. So really, once he got older, it was no surprise to either of his brothers that he became the knight in shining armor, aka the night mouse of Zudoria. Night mouse is riding on Marcel in this painting. Marcel, as we learnt from his video, he is the transport professional of Zudoria. He helps take all the creatures all around the land. Marcel and Night Mouse often work together, traveling around and making sure that all the creatures are safe. I'm base coating his armor in a dark gray. I'm using a fairly small brush to do this as he is very tiny and there are lots of details around him. I'm now adding in a little bit of fur that is showing between the crack of his chest plate and leg armor and also doing a white base coat for the tail. Now I'm trying to draw out where some of the details of the armor will be because it's not one solid suit. There's lots of plates that kind of overlap each other. So I'm marking those out with an even darker gray just so I can get an idea of where to start putting the shadows and the highlights. For these highlighted areas that I'm painting now, I've added in quite a bit of white and a touch of blue to that original base coat color. And here I darkened it up just a little bit for the more medium tones. These same colors are used on the joust and also on the shield. I then thought it might be a brilliant idea to add in some silver paint. I don't normally paint metallics. I normally 
try to get the metallic effect with just flat colors. So going in with a series of grays and blacks and whites to get that shine look. But I thought I'd give it a go with the metallic silver paint. But I do end up going back over it. It just didn't have that same shine. I know it should being a metallic paint, but painting in the shine has a much more realistic effect. I'm painting over the silver with that original dark gray base coat color. I'm still letting the silver come through. I like that shimmer, but I just want to paint in a little bit more detail. Next, I make up an almost black for the darker shadows. I use this original dark gray base coat color and mix in quite a lot of black. I didn't want the black to be really stark and in your face. So I desaturated it and kind of turned it down a little bit with that gray. And once I'm happy with this first layer of details, it's time to add in a few little subtle ones, such as some rust. It just gives it a, a less polished look. He's been doing this for a while, so his suit's not all shiny. most convincing way to get that metal effect is swapping back and forth between the shadows and the highlights and the medium tones in multiple layers. It gives it a more 3D effect and looks a little bit more natural than just that silver paint. While I let those first few layers dry, I'm going back over Night Mouse's face with a few more details. Adding in his mouth, a couple of highlights, the little whisker holes, and some soft pink next to his nose. To do the joust and the shield, I'm going over with a silver. And I know I painted over the top of this when it came to the armor, but I want these to be cohesive. And if I didn't add the silver on these, it would stand out and kind of look mismatched to the armor. I want the shield to have a red facade over the top of it. So while that silver paint is still wet, I'm using a watered down red to kind of map out where I want that face plate to be. If I had done this when it was bold and dry, it would have been much harder to paint over it if I wasn't happy with the overall design. And let's face it, we all know I change things. <laughs> so it was a much safer option. Now that it's dry, I'm going in with the first base coat of the red, leaving a, a line of shine in the middle. Speaking of changing my mind, I start doing the details on the joust. I hadn't really drawn out a design, so I didn't really know what I was going to go for, but I decided I didn't like it. And back to the shield I go. I'm using some black mixed in with that red for some of the shadows and a little bit of white mixed into the red for some highlights. Back to round two for the details on the joust. I've just done a fairly simple one with some black shadows and some white highlights. And now it's time to add the details and the pattern on the shield. Again, I didn't really have a design made out for this. I just kind of picked up my paintbrush and hoped for the best, <laughs> but it actually worked out better than I thought. I started with those silver circles in the corner and then I don't even know what this design is. I just started um, doing patterns, I guess. <laughs> Something a bit symmetrical from the middle. And I did try to keep that symmetrical. So looking at both sides um, as two separate halves, but wanting to make each side the same as the other one. I started these details on the shield in silver, then went up to the armor and added some red buttons while I waited for it to dry. 
Now I'm going in with some black details on one side of the silver marks and then doing white on the other side of the silver marks. And it really makes it pop out from the shield. You can see here how much that white transforms the shield. It really does help it look a little bit more 3D and brings a bit of life to it. I do the same on the joust because I wasn't really happy with it, but it's okay now. <laughs> and now I'm using a very watered down black wash to add in some more shadows and make the individual items pop out from one another. It was looking a little bit flat and the joust kind of got a little bit lost with the armor. So adding these shadows in helps separate those two things. Once this black wash shadow had dried completely, I found it was a little bit too light. So I've gone back in darker and paid more attention to the creases and the very, very dark points. So where the joust and the shield both cast a shadow on the armor, I've gone in that little bit more darker. Time to paint his tail. I'm going in with a series of pinks and whites and a little bit of tan color as well. A few little lines and a few more shadows and it looks pretty good, I think. And using an almost pure white on his cheeks just to add that roundness to him. I'm then going back in with a black wash again, adding in a few more shadows and a few more rust marks with the red oxide. And his arm is pretty much done now. I use blue painter's tape to mark out the straight line for the joust pole because it's really small and it's really thin and I don't trust myself to get a perfectly straight line. I'm using a creamy brown base tone for the joust pole. I want it to look kind of like wood. And I know it's fairly bright at the moment, but it does tone down here with some more red, red oxide, sorry, and a bit of burnt umber. And yes, straight line. Add some more highlights. I probably should have done that before removing the tape, but I was so anxious to see if it bled under the tape and I was very thankful it didn't. And it's now time to add in that shadow for the joust pole. You can see I've made the shadow on the wall a little bit lower than the shadow that's on Marcel. And that's because Marcel's further out from the wall, so the shadow will cast differently. Moving on to the reins and Marcel's collar, which is what the night mouse is using to stop himself from falling off. I want these to look like leather. So I'm going in with a tan brown, adding in some highlights and some shadows and then doing a wash with a black. This helps dirty it up a little bit and look a bit more lifelike. Just a few more finishing touches and Night Mouse is done. And that's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Here's a little sneak peek at what It's All A Bit Cuckoo looks like right now. I'm really, really happy with it. And I can't wait to see you in the next one where we're gonna be painting Duncan, the little mouse, the third mouse, who has the umbrella flying down in front of the clock. I hope to see you all then, but until then, stay creative. Catch ya.